Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 13th day of September, and today's topic is titled, Mount St. Helens and True Science. And so this uh, sounds like it's going to be an interesting topic today, uh, devotional, so before I get started, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. Amen. All right, so we're going to get started with the scripture song, and then we'll get into today's topic, and then the hymn and hymn story. Amen. So uh, today's scripture song is First Peter uh, one seven through nine. So we'll press play here and sing along with other Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. First Peter one seven through nine. That, that the, the trial, trial of, of your faith, faith being, being much more precious than of gold perish, that perisheth, though it be tried, tried with fire, might, might be found, found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, Christ whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Amen. Here we go. The trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, living not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believe in ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory Mary not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believe in ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls amen praise the lord all right so we'll go back and put that back there and uh, do that again towards the end of the broadcast but now it's time to get into today's topic for monday september 13th titled Mount St. Helens and True Science. And the passage is from 1 uh, first, uh, Timothy, first, first Timothy 6, 20-21. It says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith, Grace be with thee. Amen. First Timothy six twenty one through twenty or twenty through twenty one. All right. Today's author is C S. I believe that's the initials for Chris Dobbs. Let me double check here. All right. C S. All right. Yep. That'd be Chris Dobb, and he's the pastor of Silver Silvery uh, Lane Baptist Church in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of Mount St. Helens and true science. All right, he says here, After years of inactivity, Mount St. Helens, the dormant, the dormant volcano, blew its top sideways in March 1980, causing millions in damage. Some 54 people were killed, all of whom were in the sci uh, scientifically calculated safe zone. <laughs> um, it is believed that Mount St. Helens displayed the power of 33,000 atom bombs. Wow. It leveled 150 square miles of forest in under six minutes. Even though it was considered small as far as volcanoes go, it was large in verifying the biblical account of Noah's flood. Okay. Uh, Yep, amen. So, uh, the explosion uh, was called the gift to creationists, blowing the theories against a, a worldwide flood out the window, uh, out of the water. Okay, uh, what is he trying to say here? 
Let me reread that. So, so let me reread that. It says, even though it was considered small as far as volcanoes go, it was large in verifying the biblical account of Noah's flood. Well, we know that there was a worldwide flood. Um, and he says here, the expo uh, explosion was called the gift to creationists, blowing the theories uh, against a worldwide flood out the window, out of the, the water, question mark. Okay, um, but we do know there was a worldwide flood and that it did happen, so uh, I guess he's questioning that. I'm not sure uh, where he's going with this, but uh, let's continue on and see. He says, three scientific facts out of many are worthy of note. The first is the false idea that it took millions and millions of years to carve out canyons, right? Uh, Mount St. Helens, though small, carved out uh, its canyons in a matter of hours and days. Secondly, the rocks that formed the lava dome were measured by radioactive dating methods. They calculated them to be from 350,000 to uh, two, uh, eight hundred thousand years old, or two million eight hundred thousand years old, I guess it's, uh, two eight zero 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 years old. Um, not bad for, uh, mere ten-year-old rocks, right? <laughs> uh, lastly, the abundance of shells and marine fossils found in the mountains. Could they have been placed there by a worldwide flood? Yes, they could have been. Um, maybe mountain climbers shouldn't leave all those shells in the mountains when they climb. Creation and the flood are true, and the Bible is accurate. Right, that is right, that is right. Amen. So that's what he's trying to, so that was what he's trying to come to the conclusion of, is that the, uh, f the flood and creation are true, and the Bible is accurate. Amen. And um, science falsely so-called is wrong. Amen. But what God says in his word is true because he created the heaven and the earth and there was a worldwide flood. Amen. So if you don't think so, well, uh, better get uh, get that uh, right. But first, you better get right with God and trust Jesus as your Savior. Amen. And so you don't spend eternity in hellfire. All right. So that was an interesting little topic today on Mount St. Helens and true science. All right. So that aside here and I'll go ahead and get into the hymn and hymn story today and so today's hymn and hymn story is titled it's titled uh Jesu but we know his name is Jesus not Jesu I'm not sure why they didn't uh put the last s in Jesus but uh I'm going to say that uh, we're going to retitle this uh, hymn, Jesus, Joy of Man's Desiring, because it's not je just you, it's Jesus, amen? Jesus, Joy of Man's Desiring, praise the Lord. All right, so this was written by Martin uh, Janus and Johann uh, Sch uh, Schopp, and arranged by J.S. Bach. All right, so, press play on the thing here, and read the stanzas here. All right, it says, uh, Jesus, joy of man's desiring, uh, holy wisdom, love most uh, bright, word of God, our flesh that fashioned, with the fire of life impassioned, striving still to uh, truth unknown, soaring, doing, or, uh, excuse me, soaring, dying round the, thy throne, um, and it says, uh, drawn by thee, our souls aspiring, soaring to uncreated uh, light. Um, word of God, our flesh that fashioned with the fire of life impassioned, striving still to truth unknown, soaring, dying round the throne, around thy throne, uh, through, um, Okay, so I so let me go back to the beginning here. I miss uh, read this here. All right, so stanzas. No, so two stanzas. So stanza one. Let me reread it to you. Sorry about that. So stanza one says, "Jesus, 
joy of man's desiring, drawn by thee, our souls de uh, aspiring, um, holy wisdom, uh, love most bright, uh, s uh, soaring, or soar to uncreated light, a word of God, our flesh that fashioned with the fire of life impassioned, striving still to truth unknown, soaring, dying round thy throne. And then stanza two says, through the way where hope is guiding, uh, where the flock in thee confiding, uh, hark what peaceful music rings, a drink of joy from deathless springs. Uh, theirs is beauty, or beauty's fairest pleasure. Theirs is wisdom's holy, holiest treasure. Thou dost ever uh, lead thine own in the love of joys unknown. Mm. Interesting hymn there. Amen. All right, so that was Jesus, Joy of Man's Desiring. This is written in 1661, and the passage is from Revelation 19, verse 1. So Revelation 19, 1, so we'll go there and read you that passage. All right, Revelation 19, and verse 1. All right, 19 and verse 1. All right, so 19, 1 says, And after these things I heard a great voice, of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Amen. Uh, so that was chapter 19, verse 1. All right, so, a second. Go back there and I'll read, the, I'll read you the story here behind this hymn, uh, Jesus, Joy of Man's Desiring. He says um, here, Someone said that it doesn't matter who gets the credit so long as the work gets done. Here's Exhibit A, uh, Jesus, Joy of Man's Desiring, a lovely, uh, li lighting, uh, littling, uh, classical melody often played at weddings. A recent poll t uh, toted it as the overwhelming favorite of all the compositions of the great musician Johann Sebastian Bach, but it was actually composed by another Johann, the German musician Johann uh, Schop, Sch S-C-H-O-P, Schop, Schop, I'm not sure you pronounce that, born about 1590. Schop uh, was a musical prodigy, a gifted youth and accomplished instrumentalist who became one of the 17th century Europe's best known composers, conductors, and performers. In 1614, Schopp was uh, appointed probationary uh, musician in the Hofkapelle, uh, the National or Royal Orchestra of Saxony. Um, that's H-O-F-K-A-P-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and that's the National uh, or Royal Orchestra of Saxony. His performances on the uh, Flute, cornet, and trombone were lauded, but he was exceptionally gifted on the violin. As a result, he was invited to become a permanent member of the Hofkapelle in 1615. Johann, however, had uh, better offers, and he left Saxony for Copenhagen, where he joined the musical staff of King Christian uh, IV, I think that's uh, six. Uh, he performed there until 1619, and when the plague drove him from Denmark, he returned to Germany, and by 1621, uh, he had become the leading musician in Hamburg, uh, a city that paid him handsomely and was determined to keep him. Johann took charge of the choirs and orchestras and planned church music for civic occasions. So, one second. So, uh, continuing on, he says he became Hamburg's mus musical ambassador to the rest of Germany and to all of Europe, during, or excuse me, doing much to shape German religious and classical music in the 17th century. Many of his melodies found their way into Lutheran hymnals. Uh, Jesus, Joy of Man's Desiring, is a good example, accompanied by words 
composed in 1661 by uh, Martin uh, Janus, an evangelical pastor in Cilicia, S-I-L-E-S-I-A, Cilicia. Uh, it was the famous uh, Leipzig church musician Johann Sebastian Bach who borrowed, so he borrowed, uh, this work and rearranged it into the beautiful piece it is today. Bach began working on this arrangement during the Christmas season of 1716, but it wasn't performed publicly until Ju July 2nd, 1723, when it appeared as the final uh, choral uh, section in one of his cantanas. Bach ended up with the credit, but always remember, behind one Johann stands another, Behind every famous person is a host of faithful, gifted souls, and in the end, all the glory goes to God. Amen. Uh, or as Bach would say, um, SDG, uh, so, Soli Deo Gloria, to God alone be the glory. Amen. All right, so that is the end of the hymn and hymn story, Jesus, Joy of Man's Desiring. All right, so tomorrow's hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn, Oh, That I Had a Thousand Voices. And this is written um, by Johann uh, Met Metzer and Johann B. Uh, Cohen. So two different Johans here. Uh, Johans in these uh, next uh, hymns. <laughs> Amen. All right, so Oh, That I Had a Thousand Voices was written in 1704. And the passage will be from Psalm 130. Four uh, verses one and two. So that would be tomorrow's hymn and hymn story. Amen. All right. So put that aside and go ahead and sing some scripture songs, and then we'll conclude it for today. Amen. All right. So go ahead and uh, let's see what we got here. We'll go ahead and um, sing yesterday's really quick, and then we'll conclude with today's. All right. Deuteronomy 1.11 The Lord, Lord God of our fathers, make, make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and bless you, and he and promised you. Amen. The Lord God of your fathers, make you a thousand times so many more as ye are and bless you and bless you as he had promised you the lord god of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are and bless you and bless you as he hath promised you and bless you and bless you as he hath promised you and bless you He hath promised you. Amen. All right, now we'll conclude with today's First Peter, First Peter 1, 1, 7 through 9. That, that the trial, trial of your faith, faith being much more precious than of gold that, that perisheth, though, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the at appearing the of Jesus Christ, Christ whom having not seen, ye love. In whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Amen. Here we go. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not 
seen ye love, in whom though not ye see him not, yet believe ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Amen. All right. Well, now about it for today's broadcast, but before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's topic for the Baptist Bread devotional. So tomorrow will be the 14th and we'll be singing uh, from 2 Peter 3 9 will be the scripture uh, song for tomorrow. And it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So come to repentance, turn from what you're trusting in, and turn to God and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. And so that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic is titled, uh, Life's Deserts. And the passage is from Isaiah 35, 1. And before I go really quick, uh, I know um, that uh, when I was reading this devotional, it was a little confusing because uh, um, he was talking about... uh, true science uh, compared to false science and we know that the flood did happen and so he was just trying to explain that uh, that there really was a worldwide flood and um amen and so he's trying to call out those that uh those that uh teach false science and try to say that uh that the earth uh was millions and millions and years old and all that stuff and um and uh so all right so you can go and Do more study on that on your own time. But uh, if you're not saved, the first thing you need to do is get saved and trust Jesus as your Savior before you start digging into um, whether um, these things are so or not. Um, But first you need to get saved because if you find out that all these things are true, which they are, and you die in your sin, well, that's not going to help you eternally. So all these other matters are, yes, they're important, but they're secondary compared to where your soul is going to spend eternity, so make sure you get saved. If you're not saved already and you're watching this broadcast and you're not saved, make sure you get that settled today, amen? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by him, amen? All right, so that is the um, devotional for tomorrow, um, Life's Deserts. And then, of course, tomorrow's hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn, Oh, That I Had a Thousand Voices. And so that's uh, from this book, Then Sings My Soul, book two. I know it's backwards on the screen, but this is book two. And then, of course, the Baptist Bread devotionals are available on the website here at www.timgreenministries.com or .org. And then the scripture songs are available on the website here, Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. Amen. All right. Well, this will be uh, it for today's broadcast. So thanks for watching. And may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Amen. All right. Bye for now.